Namaste witches! Welcome back to the How to Celebrate Ostara, How to Celebrate the Spring Equinox Bonanza Extravaganza Spectacular Spectacular. Bonus points if you caught that reference. For today's video, I'm going to talk about and give you some tips and tricks on how you can celebrate and how you can decorate your altar for the Spring Equinox and how you can decorate your altar for Ostara to get in tune with these energies. The best part about the equinoxes and the sabbats is that it's not just celebrated on a single day. It is about embracing the season. It doesn't mean you have to do it all at once. It doesn't mean if you miss the deadline that there is really much of a deadline. You know what I mean? It's about getting in tune and doing little things every day to better embrace seasonal wellness. Also, if you're not sure you want to set up an altar, don't worry. I have so many more parts to this how to celebrate Ostara and how to celebrate spring equinox series. So make sure you hit that subscribe button or check out my playlist on my previous videos on what I have so far. That's the best part. Pick and choose what you want, what you want to do, how you want to live your life. I'm just here to give you some suggestions. Without further ado, let's get started. Hey everyone, it's Anya with the Season of Anya and welcome to my channel where we are building a community full of witches, yogis, and other spiritual folk through the practices of yoga, magic, and witchcraft. So why I love doing a seasonal altar is because we are just basically going with the ebbs and flows of nature. So we are living our life in the moment and basically we're just setting a vibe for ourselves. That's really all it is. It's not like the witchy or yogi gods are going to be like, you did not set your altar up No, that's not how I live my practice anyways. There are some traditions where it is very very by the book, that's cool, but that's not what this channel is about. But this channel is about finding your authentic expression and living a very fulfilled and balanced life through doing you, boo. So what are some ideas for your altar? Well, naturally, I did have to do a little shopping this season, but honestly, I found a lot of these things from the dollar store, so I figured I would share with you. Just a few things is really all you need. Yes, if you wanna get bougie and you wanna get extra and you wanna treat yourself, I'll admit, I did this video, that's okay too, but you don't have to. This is about implementing a couple of sprinkles of joy into your life, things that make you smile, things that connect you to right now in the present, which is the spring equinox, which is the star. Let's get to the point, Anya, we got it. So some things you can put on your altar. Yep, dollar store. I don't even know what I'm gonna do with them yet, but I'm gonna do. Also, by the way, if these look a little familiar, I saved a couple from my Ostara DIY craft wreath. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. I also made that entire thing from the dollar store. So yes, you can too. Invite some pastels into your life. This is a time of maiden energy, of, of babies, right? People are making babies, well, I don't know about that. But Mother Nature, definitely. Birds and the bees right now, right? Babies, pastels, lavenders, lilacs, that's practically the same color. Baby pink, baby blue, yellows, oranges, all those pretty colors that just kind of want to make you say, aww, just make you feel good, you know? Those are the kind of colors we want to represent. Next, we have some picks. This, I mean, again, get a little cheapy base, plug them in, boom, 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 you are good. Look, fam, witchcraft doesn't have to be all that serious. In fact, my practice was so much more enhanced when I decided to just have a little bit more fun with it. This is what I'm talking about. Get some cute little things, put them in a vase, and just change it up. Also, apparently from the dollar store, I kind of forgot I even got this. Great idea though, you can put it in your vase as well on top of the little flowers. A little bit of poopery. Popery, popery, popery. Wrong. This. <laughs> put a little popery in your jar. You can either make some yourself, go harvest some lavender, some rose petals, put them in a jar. This stuff is quite nice though because it smells like jasmine and we're just, again, inviting some floral aromas. If you want, these are just ideas. Also, personally, I don't work with the fae, but now's a great time to embrace some fairy energy into your life, some fae energy into your life. They had these cute little figurines. I mean, you get two in a pack. They had others too, but I just thought this tree was so stinking cute. It actually came with a cute little little welcome sign as well. Again, welcoming these energies, receiving these energies into your life. Figurines of the birds, of bees, of honey, of chickens, of lavender, of all those spring flowers, of tulips, daffodils, the list goes on. That's the kind of energy we want to bring in. Okay, so that's pretty much it for my dollar store haul, but honestly, they have so many fake flowers and arrangements and so many other things. Check them out. Some other things you can do too. Some Easter eggs, like some, you know, little plastic ones. In fact, you could even put, you could put some money in them as an offering, right? Even if it's just a couple of coins for fun. Candy, now's a great time to invoke something sweet in your life, you know, a little something, a little something, something. But remember my friends, there are no rules to real witchcraft. So if you want a pastel goth altar, which honestly sounds really, really cool, do it, do it, do it. 
just do it and have fun with it, but make sure to invoke just a little bit of that playful energy, because that's what the season is about. Okay, so I'm gonna just go ahead and go straight to setting up my altar. It's gonna be a POV shot. Let me know if you like that kind of style, please, if you can drop a comment. Um, I don't know if this whole talking head beforehand was necessary or is helpful if you're enjoying it. Just let me know so I know what I'm doing right and if I know what I'm doing wrong. Let's keep it real. All right, let's go. Witchy tip 101. The great thing about connecting with your altar is that you put a little love into it. You put a little passion into it. You set your intention for the seasons. Be giving you magic into things every single day, should we choose to. And honestly, that's just life in general. That's why I, I like showing off my little altar. That's why I like promoting witchcraft as a lifestyle. It's helped me again. You're gonna hear me say a lot of seasonal wellness because that's a term I learned and honestly, I love it. Because that's exactly what this has been. Seasonal wellness. I used to think, man, I'm so depressed. I'm so this, I'm so that. Turns out, I just wasn't realizing I was with the seasons. Now look, being in line with the seasons doesn't mean you're falsely depressed, okay? That's not what I'm trying to say. What I'm saying is sometimes in life, we can live out of balance. And when we're connecting with the seasons a little more intentionally, I don't know. It just seems like I'm able to understand the balance of life. And that's all I'm trying to say. So I'm gonna end the first part here and then we're gonna set up my altar. It's okay, we're creating this beautiful vibe right now. I mean, take a look. I don't know if you guys can see a whole lot. That's springtime rain in Southern California. When we talk about things like connecting with the elements, embracing the seasons, embracing the elements, embracing spirit, it's not about dropping down to your hands and knees and praying to the water elementals. I mean, it can be, no judgment. So we're just like taking a minute, you know, I'm creating this altar space, I'm creating this beautiful space. It's taking a minute just to appreciate it. Appreciate the effect the rain is having on my lawn. Look how green it is, right? I live in a state with a drought. It's so easy, my friends, to be bothered by literally everything, and then you die. <laughs> That's what Postara, ironically, is all about. Green in the new, whatever that looks like to you. I am going full Easter Bunny vibes. Here we go, look. My little trifecta of cuteness from the dollar store. Oh yeah, look how cute. This reminds me of being a kid in the best possible way. Uh, this altar is very much divine feminine energy for this season, which is really what this whole season's about, but this is just my altar. This is what I'm doing because it resonates with me. Putting my cute little, I don't know, we're gonna figure this out together. My little creatures, my little flowers, my mushrooms rather, my flowers, yeah. Lining up some cute little, Dried lemons. You know, these suckers up. Just giving them a home, because why not? Fresh. These are the ones I actually used in my leap year spell jar video. If you haven't seen it, you should see it, because it is good for the entire year, despite the fact that the leap day has already passed. But orange is to inspire creativity, passion. Okay, and here's my leap year spell jar. there. It's a little mushroom garden. Hmm, that's kind of cute, huh? And you know what, guys? This might not be on my altar all the time, all day, every day. Doesn't mean I'm not going to achieve my goals. I can still connect with it. You know, there's no rules to any of this. Look how cute this is. My sweet little cousin gave it to me. Her and I are the exact opposite, but we get each other so deeply. We are literally the exact opposite. But you know what? I love her. And plus, what a good way to connect with my intuition, right? A little amethyst, little third eye power. That's gonna go here. I'm creating a little village. 
A little dude's now under a tree. We got some purple vibes. What do you think? My little Hawaii lay. Not quite ready to let go of that. That was a fun little journey of friendship and the feminine. So I think she's gonna go right here. What do you think? Looking cute? That is some Mama Gaia vibes and I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. It is a blessing. The crone meets the maiden. She's happy. She's taken care of. All this pretty life around her. Yep. Wow. Okay. So that actually just sent me down a little bit of a spiritual loophole. So I'm just going to kind of throw some random things on my altar. I might talk about them later, but I, I kind of want to share this moment with you because maybe it'll help inspire you. Plus, these are the things of significant value, I'll be honest. Everything else on my altar is just pretty and it makes me feel good. But that's kind of the point, right? We have our little areas that feel right, that have meaning to us, and the rest we just do it because it's fun to do it and it's bright and it's cheery. Or it's dark when it needs to be. It's dark and dimsel and, and sad and heavy when it needs to be, but that's the point. Um, so with that said, I'm coming out of really intense time. I'm just going to keep it real. Um, lost my grandpa. And you know what? Like, for the sake of being vulnerable, I'm just going to say it. But like, my grandma's not doing the best. She's, she's struggling. She's struggling hard. And, you know, without telling all of her business, I'll, I'll leave it at that. But at the same time, I've realized uh, I've needed to take on a new role of responsibility. How can I show up for my grandma when I thought my life was going one direction? How can I show up for grandma and make sure she's getting taken care of? Just as, again, this happy crone here is. Yeah, you guys, the situation is far from normal. It's, it's a little more complicated than that, which I'm not willing to share on this channel right now. But it's been hard trying to find a way to take care of grandma, deal with generational curses, if you know what I'm saying, dealing with comple the complexities of life. You know, I'm doing the right thing. So I'm trying to find a way to show up for my grandma, show up for my entire family. One of a bit of dysfunction while still staying spiritual, while still staying grounded, while still, still not compromising myself, my boundaries, my soul. And that's kind of another thing, you know, with Ostara too, right? It's the dark, we come from the dark so we can have the light. We are, we're flowing the flow. One of my favorite yoga teachers said, I am living a full life. I said, oh my god, that is brilliant. A full life. And she's going through it too. She is, she is going through it together. We are going through it. I am living a full life. And you know what? That means you are living a life of vibrance, of happiness, and of joy. But, but, don't forget, this also means you are living a life of sadness, of anger, of depression, of life not being so great, but you're still living it. It's full. And you know what? Make time for the good. And that is exactly what we're doing right now. We're still not forgetting about what has happened. We are still figuring out balance. We are still figuring out life, <laughs> how to be a good person. But, okay, I'm gonna leave it at that for now. I think I'll just do a little POV video, but step into your light right now, my friends. This is what this video, rather, this is what this season, Ostara, this rainy equinox, this is what it's about. So if we don't step into the light, we don't, if we don't ride the momentum of stepping into the light, my friends, the dark will always be waiting for us, and the dark is not as forgiving in the dark.
work is not as fun. Okay, everyone, so just live on camera. I'm just gonna take a moment to bless this little sacred space that we've created together. I mean, really, it's kind of like, I mean, speaking to an audience, you guys were here with me. Your sweet words, your kind comments, your words of encouragement, and just all the love. Those of you asking for the free bookmark, ooh, I feel it, I feel, I feel the love. So let's go ahead and just cleanse that little sacred space. Cleanse myself, even though I'm off camera right now. A little cleansing. To receive more of that good energy, to receive more of that community we are building together. I'm gonna go ahead and just light my spell jar. Doing another one, lighting her ablaze. Yeah. <laughs> that four-year cycle has started, my friends. It's not too late to join in. And then also, Spell Jar I was going to retire her today, but she had just a little bit of light left to give. I think I've learned all the lessons. I think I'm figuring out the journey of love, so I'm just going to send her off. Okay, I'm going to just go ahead and be open to receiving any last little bits of love that I need to learn for this next journey. Loving myself, love for others, love for friends, family, and my one day partner. Little side with love and my little Italian strega. We have the last little bit of my candle for Cubby. It's been, it's been two and a half months since we lost you, December 18th, but no, we will take care of my grandma. We will take care of mommy. She will be loved, she will be taken care of, and um, I know you're guiding me on the other side. So, I love you, Pebby. Oh, and by the way, Shayna self promotion. Here is my O Star wreath that I made for my How to Celebrate the Star series. Go check it out. That video a little clicky poo. Check it out, it's fun, I promise. All right, everyone, the birds are chirping and life is good right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and end it with these final shots and just go ahead and spend some time with myself, enjoying my company and cleaning up. I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I did making it. I am loving all these aesthetic shots right now. I don't know about you all. Yeah, this is really fun. I'm really starting to understand how we can make this channel really cool and interactive. So uh, thanks again for watching. And I will catch you on the next one, my friends. So much love and gratitude to you all on your journey of healing.